Hello, thank you for joining our webinar. Today I'm going to be answering every single question you could ever have about fine wine investment. However, if we do manage to miss a question that was on your mind, you'll be able to ask further questions at the end of the webinar. Right, so let's start off with the reason behind this webinar. At Elite Fine Wines, we get inundated with emails, Facebook messages, telephone calls, carrier pigeons, all from people like yourself asking questions about investing in fine wine. And we suddenly came to the realisation that rather than keep answering them all individually, we might as well create a webinar and answer everyone's questions at once. So, now we've done all the boring formalities, let's get into the questions I'm sure so many of you are looking for answers to. Naturally, when you're thinking about making an investment, you're going to want to weigh up different asset classes against one another to figure out which is the most suitable for you. So, how does fine wine weigh up against traditional investment markets? Well, if you look at the graph here, you can see that from December 2015 to December 2016, fine wine outperformed the FTSE 100, the S&P 500 and both copper and gold. And that wasn't just a freak year either. Fine wine historically boasts one of the best performing asset classes of the past 20 years. Back in 1952, a wine merchant would have probably recommended that you purchase wines such as Chateau Latour 1949 and Chateau Mouton Rothschild 1945, which at the time would have cost roughly £100 to purchase three cases of each vintage. Whereas today, Today you'd be looking at £45,600 for the cases of Latour and £114,000 for the Mouton Rothschild. That's over a 100,000% return for the Mouton Rothschild. Not too shabby at all. So, we know that it has a history of outperforming traditional asset classes, but what about when you compare it to other alternative investments or treasure assets, as some people like to call them? Well... Research using the LiveX Investables Index for Wine found that in a five-year average hold, classic cars saw a rise of 52.62%, art saw a rise of 55.05%, but fine wine? Fine wine saw a whopping rise of 99.72%. That's almost double the growth of art and classic cars. One of the other common questions that comes up a lot is whether or not the fine wine market is regulated. Well, first things first, the fine wine market is not regulated by the FCA because it's not classed as a financial market. This means that any investment capital you have in the fine wine market will not be covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. This means that when you're entering the fine wine market, you should really make sure to go in with your eyes wide open and do plenty of research before investing any capital. Recent developments have seen the Wine Investment Association team up with the National Fraud Intelligence Bureau to help protect investors from fraudulent activity, which unfortunately the fine wine market does have a reputation for. Our advice will be to stick with reputable wine merchants who are members of LiveX and to never invest capital that you cannot afford to lose. An investment is only as good as its exit strategy. I'm sure you've heard people say this before, and it's true. Especially when you're investing for five to 10 years, you want the peace of mind that you're going to be able to get your capital back. So, just how liquid is the fine wine market? Well, if you consider that the stock market is highly liquid and that property is illiquid, you would have to say that fine wine is somewhere in the middle of them. Because while you do have to find a buyer for your wine, that buyer will be far easier to find than it would if you were selling a property. Similarly to property, however, how soon you can find a buyer will depend on the quality of the wine you have in your portfolio. For example, Bordeaux wines are highly liquid because they're extremely sought after. This is one of the reasons why you should always, always buy the very best wine that you can afford. Because not only should the returns be more attractive, but you'll have a much easier time when you're ready to exit out of the market. Now, before I answer this next question, I just want to clarify that I am not a tax advisor. And if you do seek any tax advice, you should always, always, always seek the help of a professional. 
However, I do need to address the tax efficiency of wine because it's one of the main attractions of the investment and one of the most common questions that arises. So, how and why is buying wine a tax-free investment? Well, table wine is classed as a wasting asset because it has a shelf life of under 50 years. However, fine wine finds itself in somewhat of a grey area because much of it can age for half a century. However, it's often drunk before then. This means that the predictable life of fine wine is difficult to pinpoint and is therefore decided objectively by the owner at the point of purchase. So assuming that the fine wine you invest in is classed as a wasting asset, you won't be liable to pay capital gains tax on any profits up to £250,000. However, on the off chance that the wine isn't classed as a wasting asset, you'll only be capital gains tax free on any profits up to £6,000. Next up is a question we get asked so much we could probably answer this in our sleep. What are the risks attached to investing in the fine wine market? Well, firstly, it's an investment. All investments carry a certain degree of risk and you should never invest what you can't afford to lose. Secondly, if you don't purchase the right wines, then you could risk losing money. Not all wines are going to generate a positive return on your investment, so it's highly recommended that you buy the very best that you can afford. Another risk of the fine wine market is getting cold feet and withdrawing from the market that bit too early. We always recommend holding your wine for at least five years to allow time for appreciation. If you pull out as soon as there's a slight dip in the market, you could make a short-term loss in place of what could have been a long-term gain. Also, as we did mention earlier, the fine wine market isn't regulated. This means that your investment capital will not be covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. Another risk is if your wine isn't stored correctly. We'll talk more about this a bit later in the webinar, but if your wine isn't stored in the right conditions, then it could potentially be worthless once you're ready to sell. And lastly, but very importantly, the fine wine market has been known in the past for being somewhat of a breeding ground for fraudulent companies and rogue salesmen. So always make sure that you're dealing with a reputable company who are more than happy to meet you in person and invite you to client events. The next question follows on nicely from one of the previous risks that we just touched on. How should you know what wine to purchase when you're not an expert? Well, there's two answers here. The first one is that you educate yourself on the fine wine market and bury your head in books and online articles until you feel like you understand the market a little better. Or the more popular option is to work with a fine wine merchant who assesses what sort of returns you're looking to achieve over what period and will make a selection of wines for you. A professional fine wine merchant should always talk you through their selection and educate you as to why they have chosen certain wines for your portfolio. Now this question is quite difficult to answer. What sort of returns can you expect to see from an investment in the fine wine market? Well, that depends on a number of factors. It depends on how long you hold the wine for, what sort of wine you have in your portfolio, how the markets are performing, and the liquidity of the market at the point of sale. However, it has been shown that historically, fine winers almost always realise double-digit returns over a 10-year holding period. For example, if you look at this graph for the fine wine index from 2006 to 2016, you'll see that the annual performance was 10.4%. If you're going to hold fine wine for between 5 and 10 years, you need to know that it's in good hands. So the frequent question of where will my wine be stored is a very, very good question indeed. Your wine should always be stored in a government bonded facility, such as EHD London, which is where we keep all of our stock and client wine. These bonded warehouses will provide optimum conditions for your wine, ensuring the very best possible price for you at the point of sale. We also always recommend, if you can, going down to the bonded facility to see where your wine is stored. You should be given a unique account number for your wine by your merchant, which will give you access to the specific vault that your wine is in. This will give you the peace of mind that your wine is in safe hands. There have been horror stories from the past of people investing their hard-earned money in wine that never even existed. 
Now, we've already mentioned this a couple of times throughout the webinar already, but we always recommend investing for at least five years. Naturally, it depends on the state of the market and the wine that you have in your portfolio, but wine has almost always produced double digit returns when held over a five to 10 year period. Again, if you invest in the best possible wine you can afford, you increase your chance of seeing a healthy return over your holding period. So, if you feel like you understand how the wine market works and you're ready to enter into the market, you're going to want to know how much you should invest. Typically, we recommend investing between £10,000 and £15,000 into the market to stand the best possible chance of maximising your returns. Any less than that, and you could end up with a portfolio of cheaper wines, which are less likely to appreciate well with age. Well, there you have it. We've come to the end of the webinar. Thank you so, so much for watching. And like I said, if you do still have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Take care.